Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is when to use for each and when to use the for in loop. So let's get on with the video. Alright, so in order for us to do any loops, we need to create an iterable or list. So an iterable is like a collection and it's just, you could say, a abstract class that has been extended that you can create different, you know, kind of collections. So you have a list, set and map. So we're going to use a list in order for us to see whether for each or for in loop is the best loop that you can ever use. So let us create a variable. Let's call it fruits. And it is a list of string. So we can have apple, oranges, and last one, let's keep it a mango. And let's have a trailing comma so we can see when it is formatted. So you can see there's a bunch of fruits with three fruits inside. So simple for in loop is for and then you can have a variable, let's call it fruit and then we type in the in word and then we will type in fruits. Now you can use the fruit variable inside your for in loop and what this fruit represent is the individual fruit that you are looping through. So for example, you print out fruit you will expect this whole thing to be printed out accordingly. Alright, so you got apple, orange and mango. So this is a simple for in loop. However, if you were to have an iterable or list, then you can type in fruits and then you type in for each. So this requires us an anonymous function. So we can put in fruits and then we can just type in print fruit and we can end it with a semicolon so let's comment this out and if you were to run this it will print out accordingly you can even make this even smaller or cleaner so since for each if you see under the documentation so it requires a function that takes in a string so the print function is as close as you want it to be. So you can just delete everything here and just put in the print function without the brackets. So this will just run inside the for each method. So if you run this, it will print out the same apple, orange and mango. So I guess the difference between these two, the for in loop and the fruit for each is that this, if you were to create a function, then you are able to make it even cleaner. So you could say this is uh, readable. So fruits for each print or print it out or something like that. So when should you use this for in loop? So it really depends, like I say, but the most possible case that I can think of is you can use this for in loop inside your widget tree. So I have an example over here where this is like a simple links landing page or you could say like a link tree clone. So what I did here is some hard coded stuff. You can see that there's a bunch of link buttons that I've hard coded and this is pretty messy. So for those who just started, hard coding is not exactly great. So because if you were to have more than four links, if you were to have, for example, a hundred, then this is not exactly very good for any other developers to work with. So what we can do is I think there is a couple of steps. So the first thing is that we can loop this inside a for in loop. So the for in loop requires us to have an iterable or you could say a list of data that we need. So we need to loop through the different data that we have. So to make it even cleaner, we can actually create an object to store this data. So it's easy for us to loop through inside the for in loop. Let's create a class and let's call it link data. And inside the link data, we will have the string URL and then we will have string title. And as you can see over here, it needs to be initialized. So what we can do is we can put link data bracket this and 
and this dot URL comma this dot title okay all right so now we have the link data over here with our title we need the list of this data that we have so what we can do is to create a list of link data so you can type in final link data you can put in a list and then you can just type in manually link data bracket url and then you can just manually copy and paste into that so that's what i'm going to do so it's going to be a speed up version see you in a bit All right, so once I'm done with the link data over here, basically I just changed the title because currently uh, the URL launcher package is not installed inside this Dartpad. So hopefully in the future, the Dartpad allows it, but it doesn't really matter. So I can just put the same URL, but the title has to be different because this is where we are able to see the different text inside our buttons over here. So the next thing is that we can just remove all of this link button over here and then we can just remove this and this is where the for in loop really helps. So you type in for bracket final link in link data. You have this for in loop and what you need to do is we are going to use the link button widget for us to render all of these buttons. So inside this link button, it requires two things from us, the title, which is the string, and the URL, which is also a string. So inside our link data, we have the URL and the title, which is great. So now we are just going to initialize the button. And now it requires us a title. And the great thing about creating a class object is that when you type in link, dot and then you could type in the title so instead of having a map where you have to call the value or the entries in dot terms right in a string something like this so i would say if you were to have any type of string in order for you to call any data there's a high chance for you to get errors because uh, for now it has some errors but if i were to so for example if i were to have this link data map right and if i were to reiterate so if i were to have this link data map that i have over here and then i will use the for loop instead to have this then this will have a higher chance of it to have a bug because i might misspell this title or i might misspell it over here so by having an object it helps us to have like a sound type or type system that allows us to have very little chance of errors. So by having to call it by using the dot title and then at the same time, we will need the URL which can come from the link.url properties. And then we'll have a comma. And now if I were to run this, you could see that it remains the same. So it looks something like this, which I really like about the for in loop. So one great thing is that if I want to add in more links, right? For example, if I were to delete this, then I will only have three links. So that's the only way that I think for in actually makes a huge difference in terms of creating the same widgets with a different data. So for the for each, I think it is useful if you were to have it inside a function, for example. And another thing that I want to show is that there is this thing called maps. So fruit.map and then you can print it out also. So what this map does is actually returns a new iterable with elements that's created by calling f. So for for each, right, it only runs the function. It doesn't return you anything. However, for map, it returns you something different. So instead, what I can do is I can just put fruit and then maybe I will return a substring. So fruit dot substring, let's see, right? And maybe I'll do one. And then this will then have final fruit letter. 
so I have fruit letters right then what I can do is I can just copy this paste it over here and I put this fruit letters as my for each instead if I were to run this there will be strange kind of letters over here purple range range and angle so map returns you a uh, map is just another word for manipulate so it manipulates the data and it returns you the fruit letters it doesn't manipulate the original data that we have fruits over here so that's about it so that's the difference between for each and for in and also uh, insight to the map method inside iterable so just like a list a set and a map so I rarely use sets because it only contain elements that can only occur once but I use a lot of map I use a lot of list so that's the difference hopefully this will give you a better idea on what method you should use in looping your iterable whether it's for each or for loop or even for in so that's about it if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want more of these videos explaining different methods on for example a uh, list comment down below and subscribe for more of these flutter and dud videos and all the best stay safe bye bye